Hey everyone, let's try this problem. It's a seven-sided die roll problem. Write a function that simulates a seven-sided die roll using a six-sided die. You will need to show that the outcomes of the seven-sided die from your function are equally likely by generating a simulation with 10,000 trials of the function call. I'll put a list of proportions with the first element array representing side one and the last element representing side seven. Round the proportions to the three decimal places you may use the random rend int one through six from the random library to roll a six sided die, but do not use random dot rend int one through seven. This problem, no doubt, is a mouthful, so we are going to deconstruct line by line in terms of what this question is stating. So, most of us are familiar with a six sided die. When you roll it, you get an equally likely outcome of a value one, two, three, four, five, or six. Now, when you roll it many, many times, and you are to track the proportion of each outcome, the proportions are going to be approximately the same because we have an equally likely outcome for each of the possible values that you can get from a six-sided die. Now, what we're trying to achieve is somehow using a six-sided die and try to emulate what could be the case if we have a seven-sided die roll. And the additional information we have about the desired outcome is that the seven-sided die roll, the outcomes must be equally likely. So that means that if we were to run a simulation of 10,000 trials or however many trials, and when we were to measure the proportion of times that you get of each outcome values from one through seven, the proportions should be approximately the same. Now, our output here, when we input the trial value, so k equals 10,000, ultimately the output that we should be getting is this list of seven elements or seven outcomes ranging from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And each of these represents the proportion of times that you get an outcome from the seven-sided die roll, and the value is rounded to the three decimal places. Now that we understand the problem, let's go ahead and set up the code. But first of all, we wanna think about how we're going to simulate a six-sided die. That is a prerequisite before we can think about how we're gonna simulate the seven-sided die. Now we can use a random library, and we can use a function that has been given to us, the random.randint one through six. This is going to simulate a six-sided die. Let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to import random. I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste this part. Now, I want to know what happens if I run this k number of times. So I'm going to go ahead and set the trials as, let's just say 30. And let's see what happens when we iterate the function call where we apply the random rend int one through six. I'm gonna print this and execute the cell. Now what we get are 30 instances of the rend int function. And what this gives us is a simulation of a six-sided die that is being rolled 30 times. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this in a function. So I'll call it six-sided die. I'm gonna return this random, rend int one through six. Now just to make sure that this function works, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And let's see what we get. Okay, so this function works. So we now have a function that represents a six-sided die. Now, before we proceed in figuring out how we could simulate a seven-sided die, let's try to think about how we're gonna actually get the proportions given that we're gonna roll six-sided die 10,000 times. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first of all, let's update our trial count to 10,000. And then we need a way to track the count. So we're gonna go ahead and initialize a list of zero values. 
So this is going to give us the following output. Let's just real quick see what happens when we run this. So this gives us a list of zeros where each element represents one of the possible outcomes of the six sided die. The first zero is going to represent one, the second one being two, the third one being three, and so forth all the way to six. So let's think about how we're going to actually update the count. What we're going to do is whenever we call this six sided die, we get an outcome, right? So we are going to store this into the outcome variable. So we can refer to the outcome that we want to update based on the index. As I mentioned, this first element represents one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the corresponding index starts from I equals zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So we can refer to the index by subtracting the outcome minus one and then increment it by a value of one. So now let's see what we get when we run this simulation. And we get counts that are approximately similar across all the outcomes of a six sided die. But we ultimately want to get a proportion, sort of like what we saw with the problem statement. In order to do this, what we're going to do is apply list comprehension where we pluck out each element of this list and then divide it by trials and then round it to three decimal places. And that is ultimately going to give us the proportions. So let's see what that looks like. So proportions equals round C three. And I have to make sure I divide C by trials for C in counts. Now when I print proportions, what I get is a proportion of each die outcome in a six sided die. And you can see that the values are approximately similar. And if you were to increase the number of trials, then the delta between the proportions are become smaller. Now we have a solid understanding of how to simulate a six sided die, but how do we go about using this in order to simulate a seven sided die? There are various ways you could approach this, but here's one way. First of all, you have to think about there are more outcomes in a seven sided die than a six sided die. So just simply rolling a six sided die once, there's no way that you will be able to emulate a seven sided die. So now you have to think about what if you were to roll a six sided die twice and then somehow map the outcomes of the six sided die to a seven sided die. So here's one potential way in which you could try to mimic a seven sided die using two rolls of six sided die. What if you were to have a mapping? For instance, let's just say that the first roll outcome is a value of one and then you roll it again and you get to end up with a value one. And let's just say that this would map to face one on the seven sided die. In other simulation, you could potentially get the face of one for the first row of six sided die followed by two. And then this could map to the outcome two on the seven sided die. And you keep building this map out in such a way that the combination of the six sided die rolls can map to a seven sided die. Now, so, so far we've used the face one in the first roll of the six sided die, and then all other possible outcomes in the second roll of the six sided die. And then we were able to map values one through six on the seven sided die. But how do we go about representing the face seven? We could use the next number in the first roll, two. And then the second roll of the six sided die being one can map to seven. So we now have a mapping where the two rolls 
of the six-sided die can map to all the values in the seven-sided die. Now, you might be wondering, what about the other potential outcomes, such as the value 3, 4, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 4, and 4, and so forth. Because when we think about all the possible combinations that you can get when you roll a 6 out of die twice, it is, it is going to be 6 times 6, 36 outcomes. So how do we mitigate situations where the outcomes from the two rolls of 6 out of die doesn't map to the 7 out of die? One way to handle this is simply to discard such outcome and you simply rerun that simulation again until you have a matching outcome that gives you a 7 out of die. And when you run a simulation with large number of trials where you keep the outcomes of the two rolls of 6 out of die that maps to a face on the 7 out of die and discard the outcomes that doesn't have any mapping, then ultimately what you're going to get is a simulation outcome where the proportions of each of the value from 1 through 7 are approximately similar. In other words, the outcomes are equally likely. So now that we have a conceptual understanding of this, let's go ahead and try to code the 7-sided die. So we're going to use the 6-sided die function that we've already written, but we're going to go ahead and write another function. And this time we're going to call it 7-sided die. As I mentioned, we need to use this mapping. And how we're going to use this mapping is that we are going to roll the 6-sided die twice, and then we're going to assign the outcomes in a tuple and look up this result dictionary to see if the outcome is one of the keys in the result and then return the corresponding value in the dictionary, which represents the one of the seven values in the seven-sided die roll. In order to simulate the roll of six-sided die twice, what I'm going to do is write a loop. So I'll use a for loop in this case because we need to keep rolling the six-sided die until we have a matching outcome. So let's go ahead and represent 01 as the first roll of the six-sided die and 02 as the second roll of the six-sided die. And then we're going to use the try except block where we're going to try to return the result. So return result 01, 02 except, and if we don't have the matching outcome, then this is going to error out, meaning we're not going to be able to return any value from this function call. So we need to run this seven-sided die function again in a form of recursion. So what this is going to do is that this is going to run the six-sided die twice and store it in values 01, 02, and then we're going to do a lookup in this result. And this is the mapping where the two rolls of the six-sided die maps to one of the seven values in the seven-sided die. And if we have this key, then we're going to go ahead and return the outcome of the seven-sided die. And then this function call is going to exit. However, though, if we don't have an outcome where we don't have the key in this result, then this is going to error out, and therefore it's going to call this function again until we have the matching outcome. So now let's update the simulation code. So instead of calling outcome equals six out of die, I'm simply going to replace this with seven out of die function. And I also have to make sure that the counts has seven zeros. And then once I run this, what I should get is this outcome. And this represents the proportion of each face in a seven-sided die that has been rolled 10,000 times. And you can see that the values are fairly similar to each other. And if we were to increase it to, let's just say, 100,000, then we should see that the delta becomes smaller. And this shows that we can go ahead and simulate a seven-sided die roll using a six-sided die.
Now, if you're ready to accelerate your interview prep, so therefore you maximize your chance of succeeding interviews, then make sure you check out the premium tiers on dating.com. When you enroll, you get access to premium courses like A-B testing, apply statistics, business cases, pre-recorded mock interview videos, and every month there are new lessons that are being launched, including ML system design and data science coding. Not only that, you'll also get access to private chat group where you get a chance to network with peers to prepare for interviews and interact with instructors like me for Q&A. So what are you waiting for? Go to datingyou.com and get ready to succeed in your upcoming interviews.